Hello and welcome to a rather murky Vliet basis Lee Warden in the, in the Netherlands. Um, in this video I'll be showing you how to um, cold start the Sim Skunk Works TF104G. Now before we actually get started we do need to open a couple of bits of software. Um, so if we drag the folder across here, you need to go to your packages folder, go to community, scroll right down to uh, Simskunk Works Aircraft TF104G. Go to HTML UI, Pages, V Cockpit, Instruments, Nav Systems, SSW. As you can see on the radar scope here, we have a WebSim Connect uh, icon here. Um, that's because we need to initiate Red Panda. Now, that, that sounds a bit like uh, something out of a Cold War novel, uh, but it's actually the piece of software that will connect this. Um, radar to a dedicated server that um, Sim Skunk Works have got. So to do that we need to double click. You'll see the icon in the bottom here and then the uh, Web Sim Connect will disappear off the scope. Then we need to come back um, to this uh, main Sim Skunk Works aircraft TF-104G folder. Then we need to go into data. Now uh, we're going to use uh, Lady Setup. Now this will be the best friend uh, for the aircraft uh, simply because it's your configurator, your startup, your TAC Anvor library and what you'll use to compute your gravation. So um, if you look to the right of my aircraft there is nothing on the apron so we need to call a EPU. So if we click call it for EPU we now have ladders and uh, hooching and uh, other associated bits and pieces and they're all connected to the aircraft. Now you'll notice, also notice that there are no lights on in here um, it's still dead inside so we need to click EPU toggle. Now this will switch the um, power unit on and bring the aircraft to life and there you go all electrical systems are now up and running we can now minimize this as we don't need this anymore. Okay, so I've been through the documentation and there are a couple of things of note. Um, the first one is that I've had to abbreviate um, the start procedure and tweak it slightly because um, some of the things, either the switches aren't um, animated or do anything or um, it can't actually be simulated and the next thing um, I have to skip over the speed brake, air brake, spoiler tests that you have to do during the uh, startup quite simply because I can't find an indicator anywhere in the cockpit I've looked, I've looked through all the documentation, through all the different variants of cockpits checked Google, looked through the images on Google um, I've, uh, I've sat here for a good couple of hours just piling through everything just to find a, a simple indicator and it doesn't seem to be one. Um, it, the only way you seem to know if the air brakes are on or off is by whether the switch is in and out and as I'm pretty much going to be look, looking forward most of the time I won't be checking the switch to see if it's in or out. Uh, so yeah if anybody else knows any any more than that let me know. So, um, as I say, EPU's on, uh, and now everything's live. So now we do go through the, this simple startup procedure. So uh, the first thing we need to do is to zero out the barometric altimeter uh, for ground elevation. Obviously, if you're going to be flying to and from the same airfield or airbase, um, that's quite handy. Uh, but obviously, ATC will give you Q and H values as you're flying. Uh, next is to check the APC cutout guard is down and that's situated down here to the left hand side. Uh, I'll lift things, I'll click things as I go go through because they don't, for some reason they, they don't glow like um, other aircraft that I've flown on the sim and also I'm aware that NVIDIA shifts my cursor way away from where I'm actually pointing during my recording. So where, I'll click wherever possible so check the guard is down for the APC cutout so that's down. Next fuel um, shut off make sure that the guard is down again there you go guards down. 
flaps um, situated here next to the throttle quadrant um, and I'll just move that there to make sure that as you can see the indicator flicking up and down there as I flick them so make sure that is up uh, throttle make sure that it's in the D10 and that the that means that the uh, pressure cock fuel cock is closed um, next is to reset the G meter but as we haven't flown the aircraft previous that's already in neutral next is to make sure that generators 1 and 2 are on um, and when the guards are down so we'll flick those down uh, inertial, uh, inertial nav, now this is one of the things that uh, came up in the normal start procedure um, but messes up actually in the sim so I will leave INS to before um, we basically taxi out and the same with nav lights uh, and things like that because they don't seem to come on uh, even after the engine started so um, yeah we'll wait until the engines up and running before we do that and speaking of starting the engines uh, we need to um, flick the starters so um, on the aircraft there are two, two, uh, two start switches and they are situated below the external stores jetson which is this big red thing here um, and they're the numbered switch one and number two obviously um, now these were from what I've read in the documents, they alternated the switches uh, depending on what day of the week it was. So I'm guessing that um, Monday would be an odd, odd day, an odd number. Tuesday, even. Wednesday, odd. Thursday, even. Friday, odd. And then, obviously, if they flew weekends, again, still. So, um, as today's Wednesday, I will flick the number one as it's an odd. So we'll click and hold that for a second. We go here the starter going and the RPM should build and when it gets to around about 15% we will advance the throttle through the D10 and introduce fuel to the mixture okay so here we go okay and everything is now live engine is breathing and doing its own thing now while the um, engines spooling up to its um, resting um, RPM of around about 70, uh, 67 cent RPM um, we will look at the other gauges to make sure that the engine's starting up properly so um, oil pressure um, should um, be anything above 12 psi anything below then obviously there are, there are issues Fuel flow anything between 700 and 1,000 uh, pounds an hour, 1,600 pounds an hour. As you can see, we're around about 600, um, but the engine is just settling, so give it a chance. Nozzle position should be between 8 and 9, which is 9 and 10. Um, so if we just advance the throttle ever so slightly, we'll get the readings that we need. For some reason, the they don't seem to settle where they should be um, in the procedures list and now I'm sitting at practically 70% RPM instead of 67 and it does say in the, the flight manual give give or take one either way so so you can have 66 or 68% RPM um, so that needs tweaking um, and then the um, exhaust gas temperature should be between anything between 320 degrees centigrade and 420 degrees centigrade as you can see we are just below 400 degrees so that's within the margins um, so yeah that's all good um, and the starter actually switches itself off as soon as you let go of the button um, and the EPU and ladders as you can see have come away they're disconnected so we can pull away without causing any issues with the the ground units <coughs> so after start INS align uh, again that's this is where we would be aligning the INS um, but I will leave that until um, the end of this uh, part of the checklist 
speed brake check again unless we do it externally we're not going to find out but we'll do that anyway so as you can see everything's disconnected um, and we do have speed brakes, air brakes, spoilers, whatever you want to call them back into the cockpit right so after that we need to check the controls we've got full freedom of movement so yeah all is good and obviously we'd have somebody outside the aircraft and that's that everything's going as it should be um, flaps and flap check now everything is in the up position at the moment as you can see just on the other side of the throttle there and obviously up here leading edge trailing edge flap position is they're both in the up position so what we're going to do is drop that all the way down to takeoff position and just to make sure that leading edge trailing edge shows us TD uh, TO uh, LD sorry landing so yeah that's good and then we'll flick them up to takeoff position and now they're in takeoff position now um, those in the know will probably now say but there are four positions to the flaps on uh, an F-104 for some reason um, Simskunk Works decided to delete two of those and so now we've just got um, takeoff and um, landing there were two takeoff positions um, and then a mid and a, a landing um, but we just have the two now so um, yeah so the, flip, the flaps are in takeoff we'll leave them in takeoff now I'm going to start the INS now to know that the INS is actually working other than the lights down here above it uh, we have a, an artificial horizon that's actually off at the moment um, what will happen is when the INS has been aligned and set to nav um, that will become active. The off flag will disappear and it will calibrate to its proper position. So we'll do that now and obviously you can see that it says we have an inertial nav fault. That's not the case though. So standby. Let it heat up and we'll do the lights while we're here. So we'll just flick the beacon lights on keep the lights steady okay so now we'll flick to align goes to green and now we'll flick to nav well that went well and there we go I don't know what happened there but flicking the switch back to a line and back into nav has now deleted the fault and now the um, the artificial horizon here is now calibrated now that's after start checks done um, and now we can close the canopy with this lever here and that will close both canopies the announciator panel is now clear radar is good to go um, obviously we don't start that on the ground uh, green lights take off position everything's within the margins so now what we'll do is we'll do our brake check and then flick on anti-skid um, and we can taxi to the end of the runway uh, we just do need to do one more check and that's click here where the um, these are the uh, trim um, indicators when they're in takeoff position or neutral uh, they light up so just clicking the middle one there switches that on so it's actually the stabilizer in the takeoff position now so um, yeah release parking brake throttle up slightly brake check yep brakes are working all right go inside and now we can put on our anti-skid and you can see the light comes on at the bottom so now we can taxi to the end of the runway which is there and um, we're ready to go ground handling is so easy in this aircraft so um, there aren't anything anything to worry about nothing major anyway okay so we're going to brake here at the end of the runway 
and there you go. Uh, that is cold starting the uh, Super Skunk Works TF104G. Um, I hope that's made some sense. Um, it's the only way I could get everything working properly without any issues. Um, we now have our nav lights on. Uh, the only thing that's missing from the TF104G that I've found is the beacon lights. There should be one above and below the fuselage. And for some reason, they're not here. So, um, yeah, if you're looking out for those, they're not there. Um, and then we can switch on our takeoff lights, of which very little is shown uh, because they don't seem to have been. No, they don't seem to look like they're on, but we've got light on the ground. But other than that, we're good to go. So yeah, TF-104G, cold start, and the shortest taxi I think I've ever done. Hope that helped. Um, if you got this far, thank you for watching, and, well, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, and I, as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.